today's lions mostly live in Africa, with a small population restricted to Gir National Park, India. However, they once roamed further afield. The Eurasian lion prowled mainland Europe and Asia 780,000 years ago until its extinction 10,000 years ago. North America had its own lion, aptly named the American lion or cave lion. Some scientists believe this lion evolved from the Eurasian lions that crossed over from Eurasia via the Bering Land Bridge into North America. These first lions that established themselves in North America eventually gave rise to the American lions and then South America's jaguar. Although the American lion successfully inhabited North America for thousands of years, the continent during the Pleistocene was very different from today. Not only that, but the American lion was a different species from today's African and Asian lions. Just because this prehistoric lion thrived in North America doesn't mean that modern lions would do the same. Here, we look at this possibility and ask the question, could lions survive in North America? In order to answer this question, we need to take into consideration North America's climate, habitat, prey, and competition. If we first look at North America's climate and compare it to that of Sub-Saharan Africa, we can find out whether African lions could survive America's climatic conditions. All of Africa's lions inhabit Sub-Saharan Africa. The climate in the central and southern regions include tropical savannas, with some arid and temperate climates. Tanzania is home to the greatest population of lions in Africa. Its climate has wide and varied temperatures from 10 to 20 degrees Celsius, or 50 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit in the highlands, to 31 degrees Celsius, or 88 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer months across the rest of the country. In South Africa's Kruger National Park, temperatures typically range from 16 to 27 degrees Celsius, or 61 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Here, there are some 1,600 lions spread across the 7,500 square mile parks. And in Botswana's Chobe National Park, which also has a significant population of lions, the average annual temperatures range from 9 degrees Celsius to 36 degrees Celsius, or 48 to 97 degrees Fahrenheit. Lions are able to thrive in a variety of climates with variable temperatures. In America, the hottest states include Florida, Hawaii, and Louisiana, whilst Alaska has some of the coldest winters around. The southern states have temperature ranges that are more similar to those found where lions naturally live. Areas of California and Arizona are also relatively mild all year round. Broadly speaking, climate doesn't seem to solely determine where lions live. There are plenty of African countries that have hotter and wetter climates than others, and each of these has lions. With the huge variety of climates across the United States, we believe there are plenty of states that lions could survive in if we just considered climatic conditions. If we now look at habitat, we can see if America offers the space and wilderness that lions require. A pride of lions can maintain a territory from anything as small as 8 square miles to a whopping 150 square miles. Lions are the only cats to live in groups or prides. These can consist as many as 40 individuals. They occupy a range of habitats except for tropical rainforests. Instead, they prefer grassland, savanna, dense scrub, and open woodland. These habitats where their prey is most abundant and allows them to hunt them using their speed and agility. The grasslands of America's Great Plains could provide the open habitat that lions are used to, but the climate is known for being very cold and harsh in the winter months. These habitats, of course, need to provide an abundance of prey species for lions to hunt. This leads to the prey species that might be available to lions if they lived in North America. Lions are strict carnivores. They are highly adapted to take down medium to large prey. Their sharp canines and claws, coupled with a bite force of 650 psi, make them formidable predators. They have incredibly rough tongues which help them to peel back their prey's skin to get to the flesh underneath. They also function socially hunting collaboratively as a group, making kills quicker and easier, and enabling them to take down sizable prey. In Africa, their typical prey consists of zebra, 
wildebeest, antelope, buffalo, giraffe, and wild hogs. In Asia, the lions hunt wild boars, buffalo, antelope, and deer. As Florida seems to have the climate and habitat to enable lions to survive in North America, we will focus on this state when considering prey species. The only deer truly native to Florida is the white-tailed deer. Their numbers were dwindling during the 1930s, but successful management of their population has now resulted in over 700,000 statewide. Other introduced species include red deer, sambar deer, and key deer. However, the numbers of these deers are less than 1,000 individuals for each species, probably not providing enough for lions to prey on. Florida is also home to 12% of America's wild boars. This amounts to huge numbers of them in Florida. It is thought that the damage inflicted on farmland and the native flora and fauna is caused by a population of half a million wild boar. In Africa, the wild boar's equivalent is the warthog. These hairy pigs make up a significant portion of the lion's food and are particularly hunted during the dry season, when other prey species are scarce. Florida's Payne's Prairie Preserve is also home to a handful of bison, not enough to sustain any lions. However, if there were still the large herds that once roamed North America, this could provide the right sort of prey a pride of lions would need to survive. When we consider prey, it looks as if there might not be enough to sustain the hungry prides of lions, where there are larger numbers of ungulates, like the bison that roam Yellowstone National Park. The climate isn't favorable for these big cats all year round. Wild boar may end up being the lion's primary prey if lions were introduced to Florida. But would this be sustainable? If lions had survived in North America from the beginning of the Holocene and become established apex predators, it is possible they would have adapted to the seasonal changes. This could either be through migrating to warmer climates during winter or developing behaviors to cope with the cold. This could include partial or full hibernation, a behavior exhibited by some of America's apex predators, the black and brown bears. They may follow food sources, switching from one prey species in the summer to another in the winter when they head to warmer states. However, movement around a huge, vastly populated country would not be feasible unless wildlife corridors were built. Finally, let's consider the competition that lions might face in North America. In Africa, lions live in the same habitat as other carnivorous predators. Leopards, cheetahs, and hyenas all live side by side with lions. Whilst they try to avoid each other as much as possible, their territories inevitably overlap. But in Africa's great reserves, there is enough space to allow the coexistence of these species. There is enough prey to go around. The climate is favorable for each of these groups of animals, and they largely survive without too much conflict. In America, bears, wolves, coyotes, and mountain lions could compete for food with lions. These species all hunt and catch similar prey. They are well adapted to North America and are established species. Introduced lions may struggle to compete with America's predators for food and territory. Lions have the advantage of being able to hunt in groups. They could tackle some of America's larger ungulates, like red deer that weigh 240 kilograms or 530 pounds, as well as the 1200 kilogram or 2600 pound bison. Brown bears also hunt large animals including moose. There would likely be competition for the availability of prey. As apex predators, lions play a crucial role in the ecosystem. By controlling the number of herbivores, they consequently manage the grasslands and vegetation. This has impacts right through the food chain, right down to the smallest invertebrates. If lions were to suddenly inhabit North America, their impact would be felt all the way across the ecosystem, unbalancing the fragile existence of those species already found there. If their ancestors had made America their home thousands of years ago, then it is likely other species that are endemic to and characteristic of North America simply wouldn't exist today. We conclude that it may be possible for lions to call North America their home, but probably not if they were introduced there suddenly. If they had time to adapt their behavior and physical characteristics over thousands of years, then maybe they could survive in North America today.
But there is a reason that the prehistoric American lion became extinct. There is a reason that today's lions are only found in Africa and a small part of India. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time.